Okay, so this is a more popular essay question that they could ask you, which is to explain the main principles behind the use of ultrasound to obtain diagnostic information. So just a recap, the previous essay question was explain generation of ultrasound or detection of ultrasound. And here we are going to talk about how we use ultrasound to look into the internal body structure of a human being. So you can see it come out many times now. Lah. All right. So will it come out again? Mm -hmm. All right. But for me, I feel that it's easier for me to remember essay if I think about the process in the picture in my head. So to facilitate that for you or to help you do that, uh, I have a picture here. Okay, so this picture is not new to you. Uh, we have covered this in a previous example. We need a transducer to send ultrasound into the body. But we need to send ultrasound in pulses. Okay, we need the ultrasound to be in pulses because we are going to take multiple readings. Multiple readings more accurate. What you send one pulse, come back. Maybe something happened. Eh? Maybe the baby yawn and stretch and then disturb the ultrasound. Then you don't get clear image already. So we are going to have repeated ultrasound. Okay. So it is during the pulse, so repeated pulses, one pulse, two pulse, three pulse, in between the silence or the no pulse, no ultrasound, is when the machine will analyze the sound. You cannot consistently have noise. Let's say, for example, I ask you a question, but then I don't pause to wait for you to answer. <laughs> then there's no feedback, or there's no reflection. Then I cannot know whether what I am detecting is the reflected pulse or my own voice. Does that make sense? So that's why we have a listening period. You send the ultrasound, you listen for the reflection. If you keep sending ultrasound, then the incident ultrasound and the reflected ultrasound will just keep confusion. It is confusion to the machine. All right. So we'll start off with there first. We are going to send pulses of ultrasound. But before that, we are going to get mother ready for ultrasound. So what's the first thing we do? Uh? We put on the mother. We squirt some gel. Okay, so a gel is used as your coupling agent. <laughs> okay, on the skin to reduce reflection at the skin boundary. This is a very popular past year question. It can be a past year question on its own. So make sure you know how to do that question when it comes to calculation using your specific acoustic impedance to find and decide why we use the gel. Okay, so right now, we gel the mother, we put the transducer on the skin, and we are ready to send a pulse. Pulses. Okay, so pulses of ultrasound is produced by applying. What do we apply to the crystal? Alternating electric field. Remember the first essay? We put alternating current. So to vibrate or to stretch and compress the crystal. So this is done by applying alternating potential difference across the quartz crystal in the transducer. All right. So now the ultrasound will reflect. So we have already discussed the transducer. And we are ready for the ultrasound to reflect. So think about this picture again. The ultrasound will enter the muscle and then reflect at the bone boundary. All right, so it's that reflection between media. The media here is muscle and bone. And we're going to pick up the reflected pulse. Okay, so the ultrasound is reflected from the boundary between media. This reflected ultrasound is detected by the ultrasound transmitter, which is also the transducer. So I'll just write the word transducer here. You could use the word transducer. Okay. And then obviously we're going to have to process the data. So the brief calculation I did just now was a data processing. I did the data processing, but we can command or write a code for the computer to do it. All right. This processing that we did. Okay. So the reflected pulse is detected and processed. But what about the reflected pulse that gives us information about what we are scanning? For example, I want to scan the baby and then I want to know whether there's a fluid in the baby's lungs. 
I want to know whether the baby is uh, have the kidneys are functioning. So the intensity of the reflected pulse will give us information about all those things. So it will give information about the type of media. We use media as a plural term for medium. But actually what I'm just trying to say is that in the ultrasound, we can detect uh, whether the baby has club food, whether the baby has Down syndrome, whether the baby has a kidney problem or the lungs are underdeveloped. We can tell all of this in the ultrasound. So we can do an intervention to try to save the baby and save the mother at the same time. Okay, And also, as mentioned just now, there's this thing called time delay. The deeper the tissue is, the longer the time will be. So the time delay will give information about the depth of the media or the skin tissue. Lah. Okay, And if you want to be a bit more specific, this is the time delay between the incident and reflected pulse of ultrasound. All right, and the final, final point that uh, can be included is that the degree of reflection depends on the impedances of both media. So this one depends on your Z value. So basically, whenever you go through a calculation, all the calculation examples we've discussed just now, the intensity attenuation will give us information not just about the type of media, but also the reflection and the boundary. Okay, The attenuation can also tell us how deep the depth of the media is together with the time delay. So there's always double information to make our data a bit more valid. So then there's more than enough points here. Normally, this kind of questions is six marks. You can write any of these six points, but just make sure that you talk about the important things, okay? So let us uh, go through the important things. The first one is preparation. So step one and step two, step one is to prepare. Okay, so how do you prepare the mother? You place the gel, okay? And why do we prefer use the gel? To reduce reflection at the skin boundary, okay? So if you say that the ultrasound is placed and then you use a gel as a coupling agent, this one you will get one mark. Okay. Second one, we are using pulses of ultrasound. You mentioned the word pulses of ultrasound uh, is good enough. Uh, you will get one mark already. Okay. And then how do we get pulses? All right. We get pulses by applying alternating potential difference across the crystal in the transducer. Uh, in the later years, they don't uh, they don't award mark for this, but the earliest they will. I don't know, man. Just write. How do we get ultrasound? Ultrasound. We put alternating potential difference. All right. Third point. Ultrasound is reflected at the boundaries between the media. You have to mention that the term reflection and the term boundary between media. If not, then you why why no reason you go reflect? Oh, that makes no sense, right? Okay. So this is one mark. The reflected ultrasound is now picked up and detected. So this is ultrasound going in. 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, ultrasound going in. Okay. 0 0.4, now it's time to detect the ultrasound. So I guess if I'm going to write anything, I'll just say these three points here is uh, generating and sending the ultrasound in. Going in. And then this one is when the ultrasound come out. It detect your data. Data coming out. So first, we're going to detect the ultrasound, okay, using an ultrasound transducer, which is the one which is the same thing. And then the data is processed and displayed, okay. So if you mention that the reflected pulse is detected by the ultrasound transducer is better, Okay, to show that you know the transducer is doing both generating and detecting ultrasound. That would be one mark. This one here is one mark. Okay, and then you talk about the intensity. Intensity will give information about the type of media. This is one mark. And time delay will give you information about the depth. So time delay relating to depth. That would be another one mark. Normally six mark. How many already? Ah? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, we have six already. 
Okay, another one that you can write is the seventh one. Look. Degree of reflection. Okay, this degree of reflection depends on the impedances of both media, your Z value. Okay, of course you can write more so that the sentence makes more sense for you and it's easier for you to understand. For example, if I have space, I will say that the reflect the fraction of ultrasound reflected depends on the impedances of both media between the boundaries. Okay, so that is an example. So normally they'll give you a few lines. You have to write everything. It looks like this. I'm not going to rewrite everything. This is basically the answer for down there. All right. Um, I just want to continue with this question a bit. Okay. Because there are some explanation questions here that uh, they will also tend to ask. For example, state and explain one advantage of the use of high frequency ultrasound as compared to low frequency ultrasound. The thing about high frequency ultrasound so let's think about high frequency ultrasound. Remember, they have lower wavelength or shorter wavelength. So that will be my first point. Shorter wavelength means uh, smaller structures can be detected. Shows that the ultrasound has a shorter wavelength. And because we have a shorter wavelength, it allows allowing smaller structures To be detected. If you're wondering which year this is, this is ON13, uh, paper 41. Hey, all right. So when we say smaller structures can be detected, right? Okay, just a quick review for this. This is for diffraction. The, the B scan description is here. So we can get higher resolution, not sharpness, a higher resolution is at 180p compared to 720p it's not sharper it's just more more details can be seen okay so we can increase the frequency because wavelength is shorter and then there will be less diffraction around small features so more details can be seen so smaller structures here means shorter wavelength indicates that the sound wave will not be distorted by diffraction at small structures. Okay, so that's the idea. High frequency, short wavelength, the sound wave will not be distorted by diffraction at small structures. Okay, and the very last thing that they like to ask you, I'm going to leave this calculation to you, okay? You can do this. We have done the ratio many times already. All right, part two, when an ultrasound emits a pulse and the signal from the ultrasound is processed, any signal received later is amplified more than those received at an earlier time. So why later amplified more? Le? Okay. Because the later signal got more attenuation, it travels further. Okay, so to say something along the lines that the later signal or the later pulses passes a greater thickness of the medium. Hence, the later signal has greater attenuation. Greater attenuation and smaller intensity or less intensity at the detector. Okay, which is also the transducer. So one mark is when you mention that the later signal has a greater thickness, passes or travels through a greater thickness. So another term that you can use beside passes is travel. Right here. Right? Travel or passes a greater thickness. Okay, so because of this, it has greater attenuation. So you need to score the first point first, the one about uh, greater thickness, travel through a greater thickness, one point. Then only you can get the second point because you cannot suddenly just say it has greater attenuation for no reason, right? So you explain all the signal travel further. It travels through a greater thickness of the medium and because of traveling a greater thickness and you think about the equation 
i is equal to i naught e negative mu x. When your x increase, your i decrease. So there's a greater attenuation. All right. So that would be your two marks. So make sure you know how to write examples and uh, think about all the A scan, the B scan. So the A scan, B scan one is not uh, explicitly in your syllabus. They didn't say that, oh, candidates must know about the A scan or B scan. Okay, but include here because I think it's a good way to think about ultrasound and also to write out certain little explanations like for example in this winter 13 question where they ask you why they want higher resolution uh, and then why, why, is it you, why, why is it that we want to amplify the signal. Okay, so echoes received later will amplify more. Okay, and finally um, when it comes to the advantages of ultrasound scanning Okay, obviously we know that sound has a lower risk. Lah. Much lower risk compared to x-ray. Because sound got no ionizing power. If sound has ionizing power, what happened to your ears by now? Okay, won't cause cell damage. And a lot of ultrasound machines are portable right now. Okay, it's le legit something you can pack in the bag and bring along with you. Which is why sometimes if you look at people giving birth of children at home, the midwife or the doula will carry a portable ultrasound and a Doppler to monitor the child's heart rate. Okay, so I'm not going to talk more about Doppler ultrasound, but that's it for the chapter. So what is important for you to know is to write explanation, okay, regarding the generation of ultrasound, how ultrasound is generated, how it's detected, and how it's used to look at internal body structure. You should also be able to calculate uh, Calculate questions involving attenuation, ratio of certain intensity, okay, and also ratio of certain things at the boundary. So basically, number five and six and seven has some calculation element in it, and I hope you know. I'm just going to draw a star where there's calculation. Why we need a gel got calculation. Ratio of intensity got calculation. Degree of reflection also got calculation. So make sure you know how to do those calculations. That is what is generally asked in the past year. Sometimes they will ask a little bit more, like show, like I showed just now in the example. So just read up a bit more about ultrasound, A scan and the B scan. All right. So that's it for this chapter. Short and sweet. You learn how to use and you learn that how ultrasounds are generated. You learn how it's used to diagnose body structure. But you haven't learned how to read an ultrasound yet. I guess that would be your time in medical school. Okay, and this is how we use sound wave to look into the human body. I hope you learned something today, and I wish you the best in your A2. I'll see you in the next chapter. Take care. Bye bye.